We also have Kathy Graham and myself. We're both partners at ERP VAR. And you can reach us at our Twitter handle at, at ERP VAR. Uh, and this just kind of gives you a little bit of uh, personality here, character. We're going to be talking about co company culture and character throughout our presentation. So uh, just a couple pictures to kind of put a face with our names here. And uh, Kathy, um, I'd like to introduce you and welcome you to kind of go through this slide. And Buck, I'd like uh, you to go over your experience, but we'll go ahead and start with Kathy. Well, thank you. Hi, everybody. I see some familiar faces out here in the audience and uh, happy to be here today. We, uh, Adrian and I have been working with the ERP community for the last 19 years. Our, we started our uh, career early in the 1997. That was when DOS was converting to Windows with Sage and uh, things evolved after we left. Um, started at Avalara, I think I was employee number 30, and now they're in the thousands. I keep uh, hearing new counts of their employees. But uh, that was an interesting run to uh, have that third party perspective, um, working as um, with a growing company like Avalara. Um, Intuit was a, a time when they were about to take over the mid market with QuickBooks Enterprise, and that little test. Um, didn't quite take off the way I thought it was going to, but spent some good time there in recruiting partners, working with the channel. And uh, Adrian also spent time working with a partner out of uh, based out of Texas. And that gave her some inside reseller perspective. Uh, we started a uh, company SOS. Adrian started that working mostly to support uh, partners, ERP VARs like yourself, uh, with marketing, because that's where in all our years working as channel managers in sales, we really found the biggest struggle uh, in trying to promote sales is the marketing piece. So with our background, we're really here now at ERP VAR. We've been described as the next generation of find accounting software. And uh, we're really, our website is meant to bring the spirit of the trade show uh, where prospects, customers, third party ISVs, resellers or VARs like yourselves all get together to learn about how to connect the dots and what solutions make sense for customers. So our website ERP VAR is meant to bring that all together with webinars that we do, the blogs that we do to help educate customers and prospects on solutions or upcoming products like Acumatica that they may not be aware of. So we help try to put the pieces of the puzzle together for the, the customers and the, and the prospects. And um, some of our clients you can see here, B Technologies, Scanco, you may be familiar with APS Merchants. I think Patty's out in the audience today. Hello, Patty. Uh, clients first, E2B, and many more. So we look forward to talking to you more about what we do here at ERP VAR. I'm going to turn it over to Dawn and Buck so you can um, talk a little bit about yourself. Hi, well, this is Dawn. I guess I'll go first. Um, we were just really pleased to sponsor these sessions because we know partners certainly get a lot out of this, and, and marketing is a key topic for our partners and others, I'm sure. So Acumatica, as most of you probably will know, is the, uh, the leading and fastest growing cloud ERP solution. We are always looking for good partners to represent our products, and um, I think I'll have Riley Morris on the phone as well. So if you have any questions um, throughout, feel free to put them in the chat or anything from us after the fact. I think we'll be able to answer any questions you have about partnership if you're interested in that. But again, to Adrian and Kathy, thank you so much for putting on these great presentations. We appreciate it. It's our pleasure. And uh, Buck, did you want to talk? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just uh, real quick, two seconds. My name is Buck Flather. Um, as Adrian had mentioned, I'm over here at HubSpot. Um, HubSpot's kind of the, the leader in what we call the inbound marketing space. Um, we kind of coined that term back in uh, 2006. Um, I've been here at HubSpot for about a little over eight years now. I've uh, been working with Adrian and her team for many of those years. Um, 
And I think, you know, today's topic is, is really interesting around how do companies really leverage social media <clears throat> to really help with their engagement, help with their, you know, projecting their brand, their corporate culture and things like that. It's really one of the tools that you have available to you in the whole concept or methodology of inbound marketing. Right, so really excited to talk to it. Um, again, like as as was mentioned, if there are any questions uh, that we don't have answered here, uh, feel free to shoot them over to Adrian. We can certainly get them answered and, and get you uh, any information back that you might uh, be looking for. So thank you so much for having me here. I'm I'm excited. Thank you, Buck. Okay, so we'll jump right into the agenda. We're going to be talking about five steps to a successful social media strategy, and you know. With any strategy, really, it's important to define your goals, like what is it that you're wanting to accomplish. Identify your target audience. Define the social media platforms to target that your target audience participate in uh, so that your targeted content that you've built for your targeted audience is uh, displayed to the right platforms where your target market will hopefully consume the content. And it's very important once you've uh, found one, two, and three and uh, completed those first three steps to establish credibility, especially in our ERP space, uh, because people are usually purchasing you know, $100,000 or more worth of ERP software. They're putting their companies on the line and implementing new software, so they need to know that you know what you're doing. And um, using social media to tap into that audience of um, people who are looking to uh, purchase new ERP software or looking for help with their existing ERP software is an excellent place to find people who need you. Um, and in order to do that, obviously, you have to have uh, compelling content to reach out and tap into them and uh, so that they know that you you know you're uh, you're an expert in in the products that you offer. So what really differentiates your company? Uh, we're going to talk about uh, company culture and personality. And if you're focusing on any specific industries, that's always a good thing. Um, and then most importantly, right? We want to measure results because we want to know that we're getting ROI on our efforts and our investments wherever we're investing extra dollars in marketing we want to know that it's actually working and what's actually working and what we can replicate and what we might not want to do again so uh, the number one uh, step step number one is defining our social media goals so what's our mission why are we doing this? So really getting a handle on, you know, what is the, the reasons why this makes sense um, and then establishing your goals and making them measurable uh, so that you can um, measure the ROI at the end of your campaigns and understand who you've reached and who's become a customer as a result of your efforts. Uh, and who is in your target market that uh, came from um, your dissemination of all of your blogging and the content that you've created tailored to your social media or tailored to your uh, target market. So tactics would be how are you going to accomplish your goals? What social media platforms are you using and how, how are you going to get there to um, uh, meet what meet your expectations. And then Buck, did you have anything yeah. uh, you wanted to add to this slide? I know yeah, HubSpot's I, uh, full of ideas here. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the, the first thing that you nailed here is, is really the goals, right? It, as true with anything in business, if you're making decisions without an end goal or some reason why you're you're trying to do something, then it's really tough to to, to put some stock in it, right? So at HubSpot, we actually have a kind of an acronym called GPCT, uh, Goals, Plans, Challenges, and Timeline, right? So, you know, with it, whether it's a social media campaign, whether it's an email, whether it's uh, um, uh, an e or a webinar or a trade show, I'm going there, I'm spending time, money, energy, all for what? What's the end goal of it? 
right? And just like uh, Adrian mentioned, you need to make it measurable. Um, if we at HubSpot, you know, if we can't grade, graph, rank, or score something, it's tough to put a lot of decisions around it and say, hey, was that successful or wasn't it? And should I do more of it, right? What sort of things should I double down and pour some gas on? And what sort of things should I kill because they didn't meet the goal that I set out to hit? So really, really important uh, way to lead off with, with anything, not just social media, what we're talking about today, but really anything that you're doing in terms of the business. Thank you, Buck, for that. And then we'll, um, we'll lead here with an example or an example mission goal statement that would apply to an ERP consultant um, looking to set uh, some social media goals. So, you know, us working in this industry for around 20 years now, uh, we, we kind of have a handle on what ERP consultants just in general are looking for, and, and this is a very broad example. But we want to be in front of our target audience with new compelling ERP related edu educational content every day. So we want that, we want our picture to come up and be associated with ERP related edu educational content in LinkedIn. LinkedIn is, has been far the best um, social medium for ERP VAR um, than, than in relation to Twitter or Facebook. But so if your picture can be coming up in all of the uh, industry-related groups on LinkedIn and, and in front of your followers on a daily basis with something different that's educational about ERP, uh, it could be how to create a credit memo in Sage 100. Um, it could be um, how to build a business process assessment. There's so many things that can roll off the top of your tongues because you're ERP consultants. You could just write down on paper. It doesn't have to win a Pulitzer Prize, but if you can put your blogs out there, you know, on a regular basis, it doesn't have to be every day, but you know, it's recommended to be every day. You will reap the rewards of your audience understanding that you are an expert and though they're going to want to do business with you because, you know, ERP is a significant investment. So having your picture come up with industry-related content, and it doesn't have to be your content. It could be your competitor down the street that wrote a great blog. You just want to share it with your audience because you want your audience to know that, hey, this is a great blog and this is stuff that you need to know, and it's your picture associated with the content. And um, it's just great to get in front of your audience, and, and the audience doesn't have to look at it and say, oh, this is a competitor. I'm going to go to my this competitor. And they could, but, you know, obviously your goodwill is sharing this compelling piece of content, and, and you're not afraid of them venturing somewhere else. It's your personality and it's your opportunity to have your picture in front of them. So, in and that helps you establish the credibility. Um, Buck, did you have something yeah. to add there? Yeah, I think I think the underlying theme there is is really you know a always be helping, right? You you want to be creating content that is relevant to your target audience, and you know at the end of the day, the reason why you're creating this content out there and putting it out there, whether it's on a blog or whether it's on social media like LinkedIn or Facebook, um, is to really become you know seen as that trusted advisor. Right, somebody that's not in it just to win a new, you know, customer and get a few bucks out of you, but really to partner with your end clients and really help them get their jobs done. Because ultimately, that's what you want to get to is that trusted advisor status, and that's where the the relationship takes another another step forward. So it's not just, hey, you should buy our your ERP software through us. It's, hey, we can really help you. Not only if you've already got ERP software, great, we can help you optimize it we can help you really get more out of that for your business and help you grow. So it's really about that theme of always be helping and, and really be thinking about that trusted advisor status. And Buck, we do um, hear there are some comments here uh, from the audience. Thank you, audience, for these comments, that there is some background noise. And Buck, I believe you are in the corporate office of HubSpot in Boston, and it's 65 degrees today there. So it's warmer than last winter. but. Um, if we can kind of try and curb that uh, background noise, it, there, there's, it, it sounds like there might be people on the phone or what have you. So Buck is going to turn his phone on mute 
when he's uh, not speaking. So hopefully that will clear it up. And if you, if I'm, um, if there's any background noise with me, then go ahead and, and indicate that and I'll try to remedy the situation. But I don't think I have any on my side. Um, and I will mute myself if, if others are talking. So it's really important to establish that credibility too. So um, we want our mission goal statement to be measurable. So if we want 12 new named ERP software sales that cost $150,000 each, we have to make a solid effort to get those 12 new named ERP software sales. They, it's not just subscribing to find accounting software. It's not, um, you know, blogging once a month. It's blogging, having a solid editor editorial calendar where you're in front of your audience as much as possible because 12 new named ERP software sales are extremely hard to come by and uh, it's interesting I was just talking to an ERP consultant the other day and he, they, he indicated that they had a 12 to 13 new sales but they couldn't remember where they came from like so I think a lot of them might have come from existing customer referrals but they don't have a solid strategy they're a bigger Bar, um, and maybe he just didn't want to share the secrets with me, but I was very impressed to hear that they had 12 new named ERP software sales because that is no small effort. Uh, so if you think of the return on investment for 12 new ERP software sales, we're talking that could be an upwards of a million over the lifetime of those um, those clients. So depending on you know what they buy, so it's going to take effort to get. 12 new named ERP software sales. So if you also want to um, find and attract your uh, the new support engagements from the existing users of your ERP systems that you support, then you also need to have that type of content going out there. Like as I said earlier, uh, how to create a credit memo in Stage 100, how to um, create repetitive invoice entry in Dynamics GP, um, stuff that your call center answers about your ERP software every day. You could just do a blog on your uh, in regard to your knowledge base or have a support technician write one, um, you know, write the notes from one call and have your marketing person make a blog out of it every day. It's just a matter of making a commitment and sticking to that commitment. And identifying your target market is very, very important. Uh, so right here we have a couple of examples of what the types of target markets ERP consultant at a very broad level might want to target. They might want to target switchers looking to buy new ERP software. Uh, so typically these switchers can be QuickBooks um, folks that are using QuickBooks and it's they've just uh, exceeded the limits of QuickBooks, maybe the database of QuickBooks, maybe they need more users on QuickBooks, they just need more functionality because they're growing, they have people all across the country, who knows, but they need to replace QuickBooks because QuickBooks can only go so far. So that's a type of target that you might want to focus on or that an ERP consultant might want to focus on. Uh, legacy software, people using their own custom developed system um, and maybe the person it retired that was supporting that system or the company that built the system is no longer in business so companies need to change their ERP software. It is like getting a heart transplant changing your ERP software. So it's a very serious issue uh, and, and companies cannot take this lightly because it can be pretty um, horrible if you make the wrong ERP implementation mistakes or if you pick the wrong ERP. So it's very important to pick the right ERP and in picking the right ERP you have to have an expert help you pick the right ERP that works in ERP. So these guys are really shopping for new ERP software. They're looking everywhere they can for help because their company re is their company relies 
on business management software and they need new business management software and this is not easy for them. So um, you can, and, and, and as we said, existing customers who need your training and support. So those are the two main target markets. Um, Bucker, uh, Don, did you have anything to add there? Uh, not really. I think that's a, that's a good summary of where customers are coming from. Right, yeah, I mean, Acumatica and Cloud oh, ERP. And Buck, go ahead. Uh, oh, no, that, that's, that's exactly it. Um, the only thing I was going to say, you kind of hit the nail on the head. This is really getting down to defining who the personas are at the other end of the, the, the phone or the, uh, the conversation that you're looking to have that meaningful talk with, right? Um, and it could be, these are a couple of different ones. It could be even divided up by role at a particular company, right? Whether it's a CIO of a mid-sized company or whether it's a purchasing agent at, you know, maybe a larger company. Um, totally different personas, even the switchers, totally different existing customers, different ways that you want to be having those conversations uh, with them. So, and the more yeah. granular, the better, right, Buck? Like, so mm -hmm. if if we could break it down to um, uh, switchers looking to buy new make-to-order ERP software because they're make-to-order manufacturers, so we want to find more make-to-order manufacturers, and then so your content that you develop is more tailored toward the problems that you can solve for in the make-to-order market. So the make-to-order market is going to be eating up that type of content because that's what they're looking for. So really identifying the target market and making it as granular as possible. Maybe you want to have your primary target be make-to-order manufacturers. Maybe your secondary target be distributors. And then also, you know, QuickBooks upgrade candidates. So make-to-order QuickBooks upgrade candidates, make-to-order legacy software candidates make to order Peachtree or Sage 50 upgrade candidates, uh, distribution. Um, so just really understanding who it is that you can attract with your content and sticking to that and focusing it on it and not deviating. And it's so important to have focus in marketing because it's so easy to get into the weeds when you don't stick to your goals. So um, number two, identify your social media platforms to target. So um, today we're going to really dive into LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And we'll talk a little bit about Google+, Pinterest, and Instagram. But Pinterest and Instagram aren't so necessary yet, I believe, in the ERP industry. Uh, but those are just a few of the social medias that you can pick to focus in on. But it's also very easy to get in the weeds when you're trying to do too many social platforms. So really identify where your target market is and focus in on that, and you'll get, you'll get your results. So let's talk about uh, LinkedIn. So five ways ERP VARs talk, uh, target LinkedIn. So it's really important to focus on your company page first, right? Uh, when you're building your LinkedIn persona, uh, you want your company page to pop. You want to have, um, you want to make it, you know, so that you have your logo, everyone knows who you are, um, and you want to publish new content to your LinkedIn company page every day. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be your content. It could be uh, a, a third party's content that you're taking from Avalara, or it could be Acumatica's content that they, some compelling content that Acumatica's put out. Um, it could be, you know, Starship shipping software put some, some uh, compelling content out there that you want to now um, boast about on your company page on LinkedIn. So you're updating your company page with that compelling content every day. Um, and it doesn't always have to be created by you uh, and because, you know, the resources are limited, but there's plenty of areas for us to go out there and find compelling content and share it. And uh, your audience will appreciate that if they're paying attention to you, you want to keep them engaged. 
Um, so there, number three here, look for populated LinkedIn groups to join, like the following. So accounting software selection just so happens to be a group that we manage here at ERP VAR. I think there's over 8,500 members now um, in that group. You want the groups to be populous. You want them to have thousands of members because it takes a lot to get a little in marketing, in ERP marketing. So find those groups like accounting software selection, like CIO, like CFO, um, that you can disseminate your blogging content that's targeted to your target market um, in these groups so that you can get as many click-throughs as possible um, in these specific groups. There's uh, make-to-order manufacturing groups. There's uh, payroll related groups. So figure out what your target market is. Join those groups. I think they have a cap at 51 groups that you can join. So pick wisely and make sure you're in front of as many people as possible when you're distributing your content and make sure it's compelling educational content that isn't an ad. Um, that you're offering something to your audience that they will appreciate, not just trying to sell them something. So you don't want to do promotions or, you know, buy by Friday, get 25% off. That's not advised because in these LinkedIn groups, the moderators of the groups or the managers of the groups, they can just flag your posts as spam or they can push you into promotions, which means every time you post to that group, your entry will go to promotions and that defeats the purpose because nobody ever sees anything in promotion. So you want to make sure you earn the credibility that you deserve by being the expert in the ERP software that you represent and your content will hopefully be absorbed and commented on and liked and shared. Um, some really successful uh, blogs that have been posted to some of the LinkedIn groups have to do with ERP implementation strategies uh, on our, from us, from ERP VAR's perspective, ERP implementation strategy, um, ERP implementation mistakes to avoid, um, how to um, go through the buying process for ERP software, stuff like that um, gets a lot of action in, social, in LinkedIn. Uh, so you also want to create your own LinkedIn groups, right, for your target markets to enjoy to join. So if you focus on make-to-order manufacturing for Macola, uh, you might want to create a LinkedIn group about make-to-order manufacturing, invite your customers and invite your prospects to join the group. You can make it a closed group so your competitors can't join without your permission, and um, the more people that uh, join that group, the more opportunity when you publish a blog post or a landing page to that group, the more opportunity you'll have for people to click through to that landing page and complete the forms on your landing pages and become prospects or customers. You can also sponsor LinkedIn updates or text ads. So sponsoring a, one of your updates uh, that you've uh, shared on LinkedIn will get in front of more audience, a more targeted audience that you specify. Or you can have a text ad where you have a link back to a landing page on your website where that converts the visitors to prospects or contacts on your website. So there's um, plenty of ways to benefit from LinkedIn and it's, I, we strongly recommend leveraging LinkedIn for ERP, for the ERP industry. It's by far generated more opportunity for ERP VAR than any other social media. Uh, Buck, did you have anything to add about LinkedIn? Oh, I, think, I think you hit it on the head. I mean, I, I think probably the, the underlying reason of why LinkedIn has been, you know, more successful for ERP VAR at generating business as it is for probably a lot of businesses is it's really seen as the business social media platform, right? Everybody, you know, hey, you get a new job, I'm going to update my LinkedIn profile, right? It's, you're not necessarily going to go out and update your 
Facebook profile or your Twitter. You know, you're going to send out a tweet based on those types of things. But, you know, it's very much looked at as a professional platform, um, you know, social media for professionals. So I think that's that goes a long ways, right? And all the points that you uh, – you know, talked there about around always be helping, making sure that if you're not, you know, spamming with ads and buy now and why you should come to my, uh, you know, buy from me versus somebody else, that, that's not really the, the helping piece of it. Uh, but you hit it on the head. Nice job. Perfect. Love the helping piece. Okay, and then, uh, Buck, also I know you have a lot of ideas around Facebook, so we have some points here to cover, and but I know that you have a lot to elaborate here because – you have a ton of clients over at HubSpot. I'm not sure how many you have now. How many do you guys have? How many clients? We have are on probably your about uh, almost 17,000 customers now um, on board with HubSpot. So it's it's growing pretty rapidly. We're we're a pretty rapid growth company. Um, but I think the the really nice thing around all of this social media, whether it be LinkedIn or Facebook, um, is the fact that you can be laser focused with it. Right, you can get in front of a. There, there's, you know, the hey, I want to have a a um, page, a corporate page that's on Facebook, LinkedIn, but also there's the ads that you can leverage, right? And as long as you're making these ads an inbound kind of that same theme of always be helping putting up content that's going to be relevant to your target audience, um, you can have a lot of success and you can really target specific personas like we were talking about before, that target audience uh, with those very specific ads. So you're not, you know, spending, you know, budget on getting in front of the wrong people at the wrong time. So I think that's a really key piece when you're thinking about driving business through whether it be ads or your Facebook or your LinkedIn pages. And you can also use a service like AdRoll or another AdSense network that allows you to laser target anyone that's visited your website. So if they visit your website and they go back and they log into their Facebook and they talk with their friends from high school or their close friends on Facebook, they'll, you can have an ad about your, um, about your offer that pops up in their conversation stream uh, in the um, in the role you know where you see all the different updates from all your friends there can be an ad that pops up for your company um, that's just a button and when they when your target persona that's visited your website you might not be friends with them on Facebook you might not know them but your ad will come up or your button, your call to action button that you've developed for Facebook and uh, the visitor to your website, since the IP address has been recorded, will be served an ad and a button, call to action button to come back to a landing page that you've created and maybe that landing page is 12 ERP implementation mistakes to avoid or um, maybe you're targeting your uh, Sage 300 uh, customer base, existing customers that you'd like to pull over um, into your uh, on your customer list. So you you have an ad about how to create a credit memo in Sage 300, whatever it may be. Um, they will see your ad. The visitor that comes to your website will see your ad on Facebook. Your call to action button. I don't even like to call them ads. Uh, and then come over to your website and hopefully convert to a prospect or a contact and then you can um, add them to your blog subscription, you can add them to email marketing, any webinar you might have in the future and now they become a contact that you can uh, foster through the nurturing process. Uh, so you can also create closed Facebook groups and invite your prospects to and customers to join those closed Facebook groups uh, where you can uh, protect your customers and prospects but you want to add more prospects into those Facebook groups and just cultivate those uh, relationships. So here's five ways to target Twitter. So obviously every time we're saying make your Twitter company page pop, you want to publish new content to your company Twitter feed every day. You want to follow your competitors, your target market, or your target companies that, that you've identified that you'd like to uh, build a relationship with. 
and others in your target who follow you. So when you follow a target company, a lot of times you'll find that those target companies follow you back. So when they follow you back, then they see what you're publishing. Um, so you can also pay for Twitter ads. And it's recommended to always add that hashtag uh, before keyword terms to add, you know, and, and to add keyword terms to your Twitter post um, so that you can hit those targeted conversations that might be going on about the topic that you're posting to Twitter. And, you know, if it's ERP implementation strategy, just want to be consistent and make sure you're always adding that hashtag in front of those keyword terms that you want to um, show up in those Twitter conversations. And Buck, did you have anything to add there? Um, I think just just one quick thing is, you know, as as Adrian's talking about, you know, hey, posting every day and things like that, don't be discouraged by that. Um, just like you said with blog post, um, you know, you're not talking about writing War and Peace. You're trying to, you know, answer the straightforward and simple questions that you probably answer every day in your sleep. Um, I think one, you know, quick thing that you can do with Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, even, um, is if you are putting out content in the form of uh, blog post on your website, you can leverage the, the social media sphere to actually promote that and really leverage everybody in the company in order to promote that as well. They should have accounts and they can actually, uh, you know, put out to their audience, their networks, the fact that, hey, your company's creating some value here for your target audience um, and promote that and, and retweet things and things like that. So really important to leverage your internal resources for this and, and try not to reinvent the wheel with, uh, with the content you're creating. And just be consistent and have a plan so everybody's on the same page and the onus just isn't on one person, right? It's because it, this sounds like a lot, but it's not so much when you have a plan and when you have some automation tools that we'll talk about later. Okay, so YouTube. YouTube is very important um, for us in ERP. If you look, I mean, the QuickBooks channel is a perfect example. I know that that's the entry level channel and a lot of you represent more mid-market ERPs, but if you look at, and, and Kathy managed a lot of the Intuit channel, so it's interesting to watch what those folks do, but they do videos, that's the top uh, Intuit channel partner probably has about over a hundred uh, YouTubes that they've done themselves, the owner of the company, you can even hear her voice. Um, so you know, she's extremely search engine optimized for anything QuickBooks related because of all of those YouTubes that she's created. Um, so, you know, she creates a YouTube about how to create a credit memo in, in QuickBooks. She creates a YouTube about, you know, repetitive invoice entry in QuickBooks Enterprise. So with that, she always has a HTTP link back to her website in every video about that keyword term. She titles the, the YouTube with the same keyword and she has that link inside the meta description, the video description below the video. And that really helps her um, gain search engine optimization because of the link and the keyword optimization of each video. It's important to subscribe to your competitors, your target companies, and others in your target. You won't see with analytical tools, you won't see a great deal of traffic coming back to your website from YouTube, but what you will see is heavy search engine optimization in the search engines like Google, Google owns YouTube, Google, um, Yahoo, and Bing. They all have a place to click on for videos, and if all those videos are indexed in their search engine, it's going to help the page that you're linking back to in each of the videos search engine optimize for that keyword term. So that's a little secret. Really leveraging YouTube has um, been successful for, for many bars. And then moving on to the next slide. 
So it's important to interact with every social media response that you get. Um, we're here at 1043, so I am considering your time, so we're going to tr try and move through the rest of these slides pretty quickly. But it's important to uh, interact with every social media response that you get. You want to pay attention to those who are responding to you. And it's, and it's a lot of opportunity to get those links back to your your, your blog or your website with each response. So if you can just notice here, um, E2B Technology is one of our clients. We, retreat, we retweeted uh, one of their um, tweets and they have lots of hashtag, or lots of uh, mentions here. So this is mentioning Microsoft Dynamics ERP, mentioning Avalara because they were participating in the webinar mentioning E2B, mentioning ERP bar, and mentioning Ship VTech because everybody is um, participating in the webinar. And what happens is the conversation comes under all of these feeds as a mention, and that becomes a link back from everybody's profile. So back to your website, and as we all know, links back to your website or the currency of the internet. You want to have as many links coming back and you want to show the search engines that you're popular for keyword terms and that you're popular in your industry. Uh, Buck, did you have anything to add here? No, I think you, you nailed that one for sure. That's great. Perfect. So we need to establish credibility with our target audience. So how do we do that? We put together an editorial calendar. We blog about our expertise in regard to new ERP sales interest. Um, we blog about topics like maybe how to build a business process assessment. Talked about this before, 12 ERP implementation mistakes to avoid. Uh, we put together a calendar with different topics and different um, personnel in our company that we can leverage as resources to help us build these blogs so the onus isn't just on one person. Um, blog about your expertise in regard to the ERPs you implement and support. Uh, so again, how to create a credit memo in Sage 100, how to create repetitive billing in Acumatica Cloud ERP. I think when you do a search in Google on how to create a credit memo in Sage 100, you'll see what I'm talking about. I think ERP VAR is number one because we've had several blog writers write about how to create a credit memo in Sage 100 and we get several hits a month on that blog because of that this is how you do it kind of uh, content that's been sent out into social media and gained authority and now the search engines are ranking us very high if not number one for that those keyword terms. So blog consistently per editorial calendar, so if you are blogging one blog a day because you want to get 12 new named ERP software prospects to sign up with you, then that one blog is easily shared to LinkedIn, to your company page, your personal LinkedIn page, you can occasionally use the sponsored updates, and you can occasionally use some text ads to go back to a landing page that you created. Uh, for that particular tech, text ad to con convert those visitors to prospects. Uh, in that same blog, in the same fail swoop, you just post it to Facebook using automation tools that we'll talk about later. It automatically goes to your company page and you can automatically share that blog to all the Facebook groups that you uh, belong to. Um, so you remember to post that blog to Twitter and add those hashtags to Twitter about that blog so that it appears in the conversation that's going to get traffic to come back to your website. The whole goal is to get traffic to come back to your website and sending this out through social media is the means. And then here's just a, an example. Thank you HubSpot for providing this uh, editorial calendar for us. Um, this is an example of uh, building an editorial calendar. You have an author, you have a due date, publish date, um, and what the topic is going to be on that's going to the target market that you've identified, the content details, the keywords that you're trying to optimize for so that when this blog gets indexed in the search engines, it's indexed under the keywords that you're focused on. You have your target personas, the target market that you've identified that you want to um, reach. 
and you always have a call to action in each blog uh, that you're syndicating through social media so that the visitor to that blog knows what, to, what you want them to do is click on a button and go to a landing page to complete the form so now you have their contact information and you can add that to your nurture marketing and you can start to to talk with that prospect or customer and build the relationship that you so desperately want. And yeah, I think, I think the, oh, the thing right the thing right there is is you kind of touched upon it before, Adrian. Is you know don't put the onus of creating good consistent content on one or even just two people. It should really be something that is company wide. Um, you know, as many people having in the game, uh, you know, as possible, really helps lighten the load, and it makes it so that it's not such a daunting task. And that editorial calendar is a really nice, easy, simple way for you, as you know, a marketing or business team, to kind of proactively think about what the next month might look like. If you have a theme that you want to be talking about, um, to stay consistent with that and make sure that everybody's kind of participating and if they're not, you know, what's the reason, is there anything that we need to pull up the slack on. So really great way to use uh, a piece of software technology to help you be more uh, productive and, and successful in the process. So, and you also uh, want to share your company culture, right? What differentiates you? And this is a good example of, of personality that Avalara has developed. They have orange wigs. They're Avalara orange. They always have margaritas at trade show. It's it's all about making sales tax less taxing and more relaxing. Um, I w will never forget that tagline, and that's brilliant of them to come up with that. Um, they even have orange uh, toilet paper in their bathroom. It looks like. So they're real proud of their orange, and this is just a way that they uh, stand out. I think HubSpot also is um, had selected orange and has uh, done some things with orange. So it's a way to show, hey, you know, this is us. We're orange, and you remember us. You know what we're all about. We're about relaxing with margaritas and not let, not taking the stress off your shoulders on sales tax automation. Uh, so I wanted to jump into a demo real quick of how you can measure your results in social media you just using HubSpot, but there's lots of different tools out there There's uh, that you can disseminate your information. It, it's not just HubSpot, but we absolutely love HubSpot. We're certified HubSpot partners, and uh, we have several clients that are running HubSpot. Uh, so this is just a, a screen of just you know social media sharing um, and how many visits coming back to uh, um, our website at ERP VAR from different um, campaigns that we have running targeted campaigns. These happen to be business partners that we've identified as campaigns, but campaigns can be you know your target market it could be make to order manufacturers, it could be distributors, it could be you know, um, point of sale companies. Uh, whoever you decide to target, you can create a campaign for, and you can see how many people are coming back to your website in a given period of time. You can do all time, you can do year, you can do month, you can do today, um, and just kind of see what kind of rewards you're reaping from the effort you're making. So analyze your social media results is extremely important because you want to see that your work is paying off, what's working, what's not working, what to do and what not to do. So just a quick demo and I'll just show you real quick. Here is um, ERP VARS HubSpot and if we go into the sources menu and let's just do this year to date, you'll see by far we've gotten more organic searches than any uh, organic search visits than any other um, uh, uh, visitor source so and that is I believe a lot has to do with social media because we're syndicating so many messages through social media on a daily basis and um, sending those social media messages to the right social media platforms that we've actually had um, 12 end users 
uh, fill out conversion forms, to attend our webinars, to um, download our white papers, um, and these, if, if we were an ERP software reseller, then we could turn around and nurture these prospects to maybe one day become an ERP software sale. But these 23 contacts have come from organic search as a result, I believe, of our efforts in social media. So we can even drill down further in social media. We can see that LinkedIn is by far the most successful for us, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and YouTube. As I said, you won't see a lot of visitors coming back from YouTube, but YouTube really helps. Whenever we do a webinar, and we do a lot of webinars here at ERP Bar, we post it to our YouTube channel and we keyword optimize it, and it's really helped with our keyword optimization in the search engines because of the consistent videos that we're posting to our YouTube channel. So I just wanted to touch real quick on campaigns in HubSpot and building campaigns for your target market. So if I was a bar, I would define my campaigns as, um, you know, make to order manufacturing distribution, whatever the target market that I'm going for. And I'd build my campaigns around that vertical target market. Um, but just for this purpose, I'll just use ERP VAR as an example. And this is just a recent campaign. So it's the campaign that you've, you've all signed up for and you've all registered for. Um, we've sent seven emails out to 6,821 VARs. Um, and some of that's duplicate because we sent it out twice. We had 1,391 VARs open that email, and 150 visits back to our landing page. It resulted in 23 new contacts and 596 visits to the landing page registration page that we sent out that y'all registered for. Um, we haven't associated any keyword terms, so we would definitely want to do that with any vertical campaign that you had. We'd want to associate keyword terms so that all our blogging efforts are helping us get that that optimization in the search engines that we're looking for to gain that popularity. So we want to identify keywords, build landing pages, send emails to our nurture prospects, have call to actions on our blogging pages um, so that when we send our blogs out that we are sending the visitors to the blog to a landing page where they convert into an opportunity. So we had 58 people sign up for our webinar and we had three blog posts about our webinars, and we can even drill them further in, but we sent the blog about the webinar through 224 social profiles. So as a result, it got 13 Facebook clicks, 30 Twitter clicks, and 163 LinkedIn clicks from all the different groups and so forth. So that just is another testament to LinkedIn. So um, Buck, did you have anything to add here? I think it, it <clears throat> excuse me just drives back to the the point this is a really nice you know way to think about a campaign a lot of people think about a campaign of hey I'm going to send out a series of emails at targeted times with certain you know other pieces of information um, this is a kind of a holistic way to be thinking about a, a campaign in a comprehensive way so it's everything that you're doing like you said right from the emails to the keywords that you're choosing in order to create content on to the actual uh, offers and things like that and landing pages so uh, it's a really nice clean way to be uh, thinking about things and we have a few questions here Buck so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch a poll real quick because we have three more minutes so I wondered if I could have the audience just answer this quick poll really quick um, are you interested in learning more click all that apply so if you're interested in par participating on ERP bar we would love to reach out to you so please go ahead and uh, click on that or if you're interested in HubSpot inbound marketing software, learning more about that, we'll reach out to you and help you understand the pros and cons, or there's few cons, the pros about HubSpot using that automation tool to understand um, what, it, your, what marketing efforts are working and what marketing efforts might not be working. Um, are you interested in specialized inbound marketing programs executed by ERP VAR? Are you interested in HubSpot training? 
or are you interested in adding Acumatica Cloud ERP to your ERP portfolio? So if you could just answer, click all that apply, you should be able to answer multiples there. And I'm going to announce some questions here. Uh, looks like, okay, isn't platforms such as Facebook and Twitter more geared towards B and C opposed to B to B? Thank you, John, for that question. Uh, Buck, um, do you want to take a stab at this one? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, certainly there is that, you know, kind of stigma certainly around maybe Facebook um, more so than, than LinkedIn. Um, but I, I think it's, you know, certainly the, the proof has got to be in the data, right? Um, that's why always be measuring the results and always have a goal in mind are super important, right? It, it may be at the end of the day, for whatever reason, that, you know, Facebook or Twitter aren't as successful as LinkedIn or some other mechanism, right? That's, that's the reason why you always need to test the data. In our experience, the data shows that uh, social media, LinkedIn, kind of leads the way with B2B, but certainly Facebook is, is right there as well as Twitter. Um, all different strategies, it de really depends on the target audience and persona that you're really looking for. Um, but I, I always say, test it, try it. If it doesn't work, great. Don't spin your wheels and do too much more of it. Um, but you got to dip your toe in the water and see what works and what doesn't. And John, I've seen a very large ERP uh, software consulting organizations completely ditch Facebook. They don't update their Facebook. It looks like they might have um, had a focus on Facebook, but then they've moved away from that. But I think, I think Facebook is an excellent place to put your ads when somebody visits your website. If you're starting to get, you know, you have to have three, four, five thousand people visiting your website for it to make sense on a monthly basis. But once those people visit your website, you know that they're in your target market, most of them, because they've come to your website, and their IP address is stored. And if you could display an ad to them on their Facebook feed uh, when they go into Facebook, uh, then you have an opportunity for them to click over back over to your website. You have a landing page that you're sending them to with a form. And then you can convert those people to um, hopeful prospects and maybe future customers um, and so that's a good way to get in front of them but you want to be in front of your audience and you want to have ways to get in front of them and using tools like HubSpot will let you know if it's working or not so it's just recommended to maybe try it and see if it works well because a lot of people use Facebook and there's a lot of opportunity to get in front of your audience at Facebook even though Facebook is more geared toward yeah um, B2C it would seem like but you can also use it for B2B because if your target market is looking for a ERP software and they happen to use Facebook, you can get in front of them there. So I'm going to give a few more moments to answer this poll. So if you could just take a second to answer this poll, we do have some more questions here. Um, what are your feelings about Hootsuite and Periscope? Um, Buck, I'm going to go ahead and let you answer that. I don't. A Periscope is that new application where you uh, video yourself, right? And it only stays for around 24 hours. Yeah, I'm not as as familiar as that. Um, certainly, if it only stays for 24 hours, uh, it, it it'd be pretty tough. It's kind of like the uh, the Snapchat uh, for for video. Um, Really what you want is if you're going to be putting things and spending time, you want them to be lasting out there, right? You don't want it to be just one point in time that uh, somebody can see it, but actually, you know, search for it, archive it, and things like that. So it's kind of that evergreen content out there. Um, in terms of uh, the uh, Hootsuite, absolutely great tool, right? What Hootsuite really does is it makes you more efficient, right? Um, at, at leveraging that social media platform. So HubSpot has that functionality as well, kind of built into the tool with the social media functionality in HubSpot. But Hootsuite's great, right? It's a standalone kind of, uh, uh, you know, tool that helps you be more, more effective with the time that you have. So absolutely great tool. 
And Ramil, um, I see that you need to ask a question, and it sounds like you want to be unmuted and ask your question. We would prefer for you just to go ahead and uh, indicate your question in the in the uh, question box, and we'll read your question. Um, sometimes we have some audio issues with these um, presenters not being able to be heard when we unmute the audience. So if you can indicate your question uh, in the question mark field, we'd love it, and we'd love to announce it. And Kim, um, it looks like you might have uh, a question about our polling. Do you see the poll up there? That's just the one poll, and you can answer. You can click on as many of those that apply to you. Okay, so uh, Romil, if I create a LinkedIn group, then how can I find the target audience? So great question. Ramil, you can uh, invite your own database into your LinkedIn group, and you can invite, um, if you have a prospective database where you they've opted into your email, then you can invite them to your group, and you can ask them to invite anyone that would be, that they know would be applicable to join in on that group. You can create a LinkedIn ad that targets the market that you want to join that group where you just send them to a landing page to join the group. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can get your group to join. Um, our group, Accounting Software Selection, it just um, it, it spread like wildfire. We invited initially maybe 200 people, and now it's over 8,500, but that's been since 2013. So it just takes a while to grow. Um, anything in marketing, right, Buck? Takes a little while. You got to be patient. Yeah, definitely not a light switch approach. Inbound marketing is, you know, really about what we said at the beginning. It's about building that trust. Um, it's not about, hey, click here and buy seven of these these things. And I have somebody asking if they will get a link to watch the recorded webinar. Yes, of course. We are going to send the out of the presentation and all our contact information and Buck is actually my partner account manager at HubSpot you're welcome to call on Buck anytime he supports me on behalf of HubSpot and we work together as a team so um, myself or Buck or Kathy we'd love to hear from you anything HubSpot related and if you're interested in any of the specialized inbound marketing programs we have at ERP VAR, we'd like to talk to you and get your proposal of, for those if you're interested. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out this poll and share the results here. 77% of you have voted. And it looks like here is how we broke out as far as our answers. So thank you so much for taking time to answer these questions. We really appreciate your time with us today. We do have your questions. I think there are some left here, and we will get back to you with specific answers. We're just six minutes over and in consideration of your time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and close out. Buck, would you like to uh, provide any closing remarks? No, thank you very much for having me, Adrian. I appreciate it, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Definitely look forward to the next uh, topic for sure. I'm um, glad there was a lot of participation from the audience there, and, and uh, great topic. Thank you so much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.